Life Audio. Christian Parent Crazy World with Katherine Seegers is brought to you by Life Audio and is part of our Faith Toolkit series. For more inspirational faith-affirming podcasts, visit lifeaudio.com. Welcome to Christian Parent Crazy World, the podcast that tackles tough topics to help you be a godly parent in an ungodly world. I am your host, Katherine Seegers, and in today's episode, we will tackle this vital and timely question, what huge lie is our culture teaching our kids about Christmas? <laughs> Look, I don't think it's any secret that our culture doesn't get the message of Christmas right, moms and dads. Some of that mismessaging is pretty overt, and some of it isn't. My co-host, yes, you heard that right, I'll explain in a bit. My co-host today is going to uncover one of the most prevalent lies that our kids get at a very young age about Christmas. A lie that if we aren't careful, we will miss. Moms and dads, we want to get rid of this lie before it has a chance to take root. So today we are identifying one of the most prevalent lies our culture is selling about Christmas so we can make sure our kids don't buy it. That's the plan for this episode of Christian Parent Crazy World. So let's get started. Today's episode is a first, moms and dads. I am joining forces with a fellow podcaster named Bethany Kimsey, who hosts the Warrior Mama podcast, and we're going to have a very poignant and necessary conversation about what our culture is getting wrong about Christmas. Now, this episode is being aired on both of our podcasts. I have never done this before, but I am super excited. So at the top of the conversation, you are going to hear Bethany's voice introducing the show. And then we're going to jump into today's topic. And with that said, let's jump right in. Welcome to what is going to be an exciting, fun Christmas show. I can't uh, <laughs> wait to introduce myself to certain people who have never heard my voice come across their podcast radio and to my listeners, to Catherine and to her voice, we are collaborating today on a Christmas show that we have prayed and we are hoping will help you as you walk into the Christmas season to walk in with a heart steadfast, anchored in God's word at rest in a season that feels very restless and very chaotic. So first of all, Catherine, why don't you start us off, introduce yourself, and then I'll introduce myself second since they've already heard my voice first. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Bethany. Uh, I'm Katherine Seegers. I am host of Christian Parent Crazy World, and we've been in existence for going on uh, not quite three years, two and a half years now, and we talk about all kinds of cultural, relational, theological, apologetic yeah. topics where we defend the faith for parents and really help them mm -hmm. navigate through what has become an increasingly a uh, very, very difficult culture for parents to navigate with their parenting and p to parent biblically. That's what we focus on at Christian Parent Crazy World. So why don't you tell my listeners a little bit more about your podcast, Bethany? Sure. I am the host of the Warrior Mama podcast. And my story real fast, so you know why I would make it that, is I'm a mom of eight kids. Hmm. And for so many years, people would say, oh my goodness, you must be like the best mom. And I knew inside, <laughs> no. No, I am a mess and falling apart rapidly. And yet in that process, God began to teach me that there is a difference. Nobody has to be the best mom or to be even a good mom, but mm -hmm. we do need to be surrendered moms. Yes. And that in that surrendering, we can become very strong, not with our power, but with his power in us. And so the whole purpose of the Warrior Mama podcast is to help equip a mom in her everyday real life moments with the gospel so that she gets to take them into that moment with a, a toddler or a teenager who are throwing their temper tantrums or anything mm -hmm. else that might be happening mm -hmm. and understand from the lens, from the filter of the gospel, God's word. What does it say for me in this moment? And how can I stand confidently here and mm -hmm. parent well here? So yeah, that's what we do. 
That's That's awesome. awesome. I've got five kids, by the way, to those of you who are not familiar with my voice and uh, Christian Parent Crazy World. We have five kids. We homeschool ages 18 to six. And your kids are what ages now? They are eight to 24. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. And Christmas is no, is always probably no joke at your house, just even in terms of organization of everything and I know stepping your foot. I always feel like, okay, I'm ready to step into Christmas now. And what I mean by that is I've got to figure out what I'm getting everybody and I've got to figure out everything I'm going to cook and all the places we're going to be. But no, mapping it out is crazy. And what gets left out? Jesus. Yeah. Our connection with the Lord, our our spiritual connection to the season and really Christ gets left out of Christmas too often. And it happens in Christian homes. It happens obviously in non-Christian homes, but you have to be strategic. And that's, I think what the, this episode is about. How can we strategically really put Christ back in the center of this season? So I love what you were going to talk about. You really wanted to help us set the tone for Christmas. Well, I think that for me, especially when you're parenting young children, something that I did not know until like there was this day with this one little child. I had one child out in a store Christmas shopping and which is a miracle that you, I only had one. <laughs> How'd that happen? I know. It was one of my girls, one of uh, my girls and they're cute and little. They were about three at the time. And of course, you know, everybody wants to talk to your little girls. And at Christmas time, what is the number one question everybody asks your child? Oh, yeah. They will squat down and they will say, have you been good this year? Mm. You know, are you on Santa's nice list? What's Santa going to bring you? And culturally, we accept that question. Yeah. And I remember standing there in that moment. That woman was not being unkind with what she was saying. She was trying to engage a cute little ponytail girl who probably had bows on. I mean, like, she just wanted to talk to this little girl in the checkout line. Mm -hmm. But... Wow, I watched my little one look up at me and her eyes were wide open and she just kind of looked at me and I knew in that moment that this was a thing. Mm -hmm. And we walked out. I didn't say anything in the store. We checked out. We walked away. We got in the car and I kneeled down and I looked at her and I said, what did you think about those questions? Are you good this year? And I want to challenge our listeners to see the way culture is feeding us Christmas differently than the way scripture shows us Christmas. Mm. Because in that moment, everything central was about whether she was good enough Mm. to get on some list. And her answer in that moment was, honestly, it was heartbreaking to me. So we have been, we've already purposely parented our kids in a different way than a lot of people do. And so she didn't really know about Santa in a list, but she'd heard a little bit, but it was the question of, are you good? That bothered her. I knew it was. And she said, she goes, maybe I'm good, but I don't know. And because the reality is she had probably pushed her brother that day and it was like echoing in her mind of, well, I mean, I did this, but that's the truth of the gospel. And that's a space where the gospel can step in with our kids and can become real when we meet and we bump up against culture like that. But what I began to talk to her about in that moment, which is I think what we want to talk about for a few minutes today is actually what does Christmas really tell us Mm -hmm. about our behavior and what are the requirements for us at Christmas? Mm Because the truth is there, there aren't any, Mm -hmm. you know, there was someone who came, he came as a baby with only one purpose in mind, right? He was going to die for us, the free gift of salvation through Jesus Christ on a cross. That's why we celebrate. It is the ultimate gift. That is why Christmas is here. But do we have to do anything for Jesus to be our Savior? No. Do we have to be good enough for Him? No. And being being able to have these kind of conversations in our home in this season will shift focus a lot. Mm-hmm. But oh my goodness, there are moments. <laughs> no, I have had another child who somebody said that to them and they were more of a spicier, one of my children's <laughs> personalities. And that this child just looked up and said, I don't have to be good enough for anything. <laughs> <laughs> and ironically, this child like, yeah, 
thankfully for him, he's probably very grateful. The gospel was very real to him because he mm-hmm. spent most days in a lot of trouble in our home, just personality yeah. wise. That's more who he has always tended to be. Mm. But the truth is that in my own home, and I think we always want to be careful about this, when when we're celebrating Jesus and we have gifts under the Christmas tree, you and I also understand the concept of grace and mercy Mm -hmm. because we actually don't withhold gifts from our own kids at Christmas. Mm. There's nobody making a statement and giving gifts to all their kids, but one child, because that child was naughty, Mm -hmm. right? You may have had many days of getting in trouble, yet all your gifts will be under the tree. Why? Because you're my child, Mm -hmm. right? And I love you no matter what, and you are mine. Right. And the truth is at Christmas, that is this most beautiful message that we can give our kids about Christmas. That's so beautiful. Is, hey, you are good. You're good in our family. We love you no matter what. Yeah, you have naughty moments. Mm -hmm. So do I. But it's tricky because what happens culturally is if you look at Santa Claus and I don't want to malign him in the way like he's on my tree, he decorates my tree, but he doesn't have power in my home. Mm. And you'll see an elf hanging off of my tree, but there are no elves spying in my home to see if anybody is behaving because I don't ever want to trip into a space that says that Santa is omnipotent or omniscient which is kind of what that song says. It sure does. Yeah. I mean, he knows when you're, you know, (laughs) he knows, (laughs) he knows what you've been thinking. He knows when you're, you're good and you're not or bad. And yeah. Yeah. So just making a list He's and checking it twice. And and the truth is our God does not make a performance list on us. No, he doesn't. Not, (sighs) not even, in the sense of like, there is no performance list. Right. So when, when you have come and Jesus is your savior, and that's the gift we get to give our kids and tell our kids, right? whether they know Jesus yet or not, is let me tell you about Christmas. Mm-hmm. See, Christmas is about the fact that God never makes a list on you, mm-hmm. but he only sees the present he gave you, who is Jesus, when mm-hmm. you are following him. So when Jesus is your savior, all God sees is Jesus when he looks at you. And he sees your righteousness and he sees you are his child and you are his delight. And so you can come boldly in front of him Mm -hmm. and, you know, pray, ask him for what you need. But we miss it in this crazy, like spying world we now live in with Christmas. That is so true. And the problem is too often, that's how people view God. This whole Santa Claus idea of God spying on us or looking and making a naughty and a nice list. I did an episode, I think it was episode four of my show was, is Christianity just a religion of do's and don'ts? And that whole concept of ideas where God is up there, he's kind of sitting on his big throne, he's frowning, he's looking down, he's making a list. And and Mm -hmm. seeing who's been naughty and nice, that's how we view God. So they don't see Jesus as a gift to the world because they see God as being someone who's constantly displeased, who's constantly saying you don't measure up because he's got this standard that you can't live up to. And that is not who God is. God recognizes that we are flesh. He knows what he made us from. He knows our weaknesses. He knew Adam and Eve in the garden before they would ever make the choice yes. to disobey him. He knew what they were going to do. He had a plan set in place and he loves us so deeply and so intimately that he sent his son to die for us. That's the gift that you're talking yeah. about. That's so beautiful at Christmas. And what we want to shift the thinking from is like, and I love the way you put it, your kids gifts at Christmas time aren't dependent upon their behavior throughout the year. And that's exactly mm-hmm. what that question insinuated from that woman. And that's the world's kind of thinking about God is that God's gifts are dependent upon our performance. No, they aren't. God's Mm -hmm. gift is not dependent upon any kind of performance. He loves us regardless of what we've done, what we think, who we are, whether we believe in him or not. There are some requirements for salvation, but his love is a a great big circle that encompasses us all. Because he loves us, he tells us 
the right way to live in order to protect us and to keep us walking in the purposes that he has for us, that's a good thing. I want to know those things. What we have to do, though, I think is get back to the place where we can trust him and know that he is a good and loving God. He is not like a Santa Claus who's sitting around making a naughty and a nice list. I love the movie Elf, don't you? I mean, it's just so wonderful, but that's the (laughs) the whole thing prevalent in there. Who's on the naughty list? Who's on the nice list? You know, (laughs) and it's it's a great, fun family movie. But getting back to the idea of what Christmas is really about is focusing on the free gift of love that God gave us in Jesus and setting that tone in our home. I love that story you shared. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And I think we probably all have stories where where our kids kind of have gotten the wrong idea and you've got a little kid coming up to you. I had my little one coming up, you know, after she did something wrong. Mommy. Yeah. Still love me, of course. Yeah. You know, that, that it's yes. a dagger to the heart, of course. I know. I know. My love is not dependent on one thing. And that's what Christmas is really at the heart of Christmas is this tremendous gift. So yeah. setting that right tone. What other things about the tone of Christmas could we do to help make sure we've got the our kids thinking about Christmas in the right way? We will answer that question in the next episode. And Bethany and I will provide you with some really practical ways to put Christ front and center in your Christmas season. But I want to take a few moments here to unpack the magnitude of this revelation about how God loves us, how he blesses us, and he gives us good gifts. Our our culture has it all wrong. And we can really see that in the messaging surrounding Santa Claus. The idea is ubiquitous in our culture about Santa Claus being all knowing and all seeing and he's rewarding all the good little boys and girls. You know, that is so sad because that is nothing like the real St. Nicholas. The real St. Nicholas was raised to be a devout Christian by his parents who were very wealthy. But tragically, his mother and father died in an epidemic when Nicholas was very young. And I I got all this information from the St. Nicholas Center, really cool website, which has some fascinating facts about the real St. Nick. Listen to this. Obeying Jesus's words to sell what you own and give the money to the poor, Nicholas used his whole inheritance to assist the needy, the sick, and the suffering. He dedicated his life to serving God and was made Bishop of Myra while still a young man. Bishop Nicholas became known throughout the land for his generosity to those in need, his love for children, and his concern for sailors and ships. He was rumored to have saved three girls from prostitution by dropping a sack of gold coins through the window of their house for three nights in a row so their father could pay a dowry for each of them to get married. And there are a lot of other amazing stories about him. We don't really know what is embellished and what is true, but clearly the real St. Nick was an incredible man. Our modern day version of St. Nicholas is quite different. And that persona largely comes from folklore immortalized in some great Christmas songs and movies. Uh, The song Santa Claus is Coming to Town was covered by Eddie Cantor on his radio show in November of 19. 34. It literally went viral like within 24 hours. It sold over 500,000 copies of sheet music and it has since been recorded over 200 times by artists including Bing Crosby, the Andrews Sisters, Neil Diamond, Fred Astaire, Frank Sinatra, The Temptations, The Carpenters, love them, Bruce Springsteen, Michael Bublé, The Jackson Five and many others. It's it's it really is a great song. Uh, so actually, you know, we were on our way home from getting our Christmas tree today and a classic big band version of Santa Claus is coming to town came on and we were all singing along in the car. It's a great tune, but listen to these lyrics. <laughs> he sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows when you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. Oh, you better watch out. Better not cry. Better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. 
Santa Claus is coming to town. Santa Claus is coming to town. <laughs> okay. Okay, I get it, moms and dads. Truly, I get it. That is a masterful ploy to get our kids to behave well, isn't it? I've got little kids in my home. I understand the appeal. But don't do it, moms and dads. Don't do it. Mm -mm. Don't reinforce the idea that your gifts are the result of your kids' good behavior. That is not what Christmas is about. It's literally the opposite. God did not send the greatest gift the world has ever known because we were good, because we deserved him. (laughs) The gift of Jesus is about God's overwhelming love for us. So make sure your kids know that the gifts under your tree are not rewards for good behavior. They don't come with strings attached to them. They are blessings because you love them. That is something that they are going to need to know as they get older because this idea that we need to earn God's love and approval is hardwired in us. And the Santa Claus messaging reinforces it at a very young age. We come to that kind of thinking naturally because we know that we aren't worthy of God's love and the great gift that he sent to us in Jesus. All we can do is thank God for that gift and say, God, because you have first loved me, I'm going to love you back with all my heart and with all my soul with all my mind. That is how Jesus told us to love God in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. I would like to leave you with the words of one of my all-time favorite Christmas carols. It is actually a poem written by a brilliant English poet named Christina Rossetti. It's called In the Bleak Midwinter. In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind made moan. Earth stood hard as iron, water like a stone. Snow had fallen, snow on snow, snow on snow. In the bleak midwinter, long, long ago. Our God, heaven cannot hold him, nor earth sustain. Heaven and earth shall flee away when he comes to reign. In the bleak midwinter, a stable place sufficed. The Lord God Almighty, the Lord Jesus Christ. Enough for him whom cherubim worshipped night and day, a breast full of milk and a manger full of hay. Enough for him whom angels fall down before, the, the ox and ass and camel, all which adore. Angels and archangels may have gathered their cherubim and seraphim thronged the air, but only his mother in her maiden bliss worshipped the beloved, worshipped with a kiss. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what I can, I give him. I give him my heart. I give him my heart. Give Jesus your heart this Christmas. That's the only gift fit for our King. He doesn't want your goodness. And he doesn't care about the ways you failed. Just give him. Thank you for joining me today. Look, I know there are a lot of things you could be listening to right now, and I really appreciate that you took this time to spend with me. I hope you will join me for my next podcast when we take aim at some aspect of our culture that threatens to derail our parenting and steal our kids' faith. If you enjoyed this episode of Christian Parent Crazy World, would you consider telling a friend and sharing it on social media and giving it a good review over on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and following me on Facebook and Instagram? Oh, oh, and maybe you could say that Christian Parent Crazy World is the best podcast you've ever heard in your entire life. 
uh, j- just a thought. Uh, and be sure to check out my website, which is katherinesegers.com. That's Catherine with a C. I have lots of articles and resources there that will help you on your parenting journey. And if you subscribe, I will be sure to send you some really cool free stuff and notify you of future podcasts, articles, and blogs. I want to end this and every episode with a word of encouragement. God gave you your kids, your specific kids for a reason. That's because you hold the key to unlocking who God created them to be. We'll see you next time. Christian Parent Crazy World is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com.